Hey, what is going on you guys? This video is part two in my series about how to become an electrician. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the aptitude test. Woo! All right, well, hey, uh, in my last video, I gave you guys, I think, a pretty good overview of the steps that you need to take if you want to become an apprentice electrician. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking more specifically about the aptitude test, which is the second step in the application process after you actually apply. So my goal with this video is to set expectations for exactly what the aptitude test is going to look like, um, and I also want to give you guys some tips and advice um, on how to study, prepare for the test, and then also how to do a good job when you're actually taking the test. So as always, the information that I give you guys today is going to be specific to my personal experience here in Portland, Oregon with IBEW Local 48. But the aptitude test in general is going to look pretty much the same across the board, no matter which local union you apply for. Uh, and actually, if you're going to be applying for the non-union you may not even have to take an aptitude test. So what is the point of the aptitude test? Well, like I said in my last video, the training center has thousands of people that apply to this apprenticeship every single year. And so basically what this is, is it's a way for the training center to sift out the people that do not meet the minimum math or reading requirements that you're gonna need not only on the job site, but also in the classroom. All right, so you've already applied to start the apprenticeship and the training center reviewed your application and congratulations, you met the minimum requirements to actually take the next step in the application process and take your aptitude test. So you're gonna get a letter in the mail that has the specific date and time that you need to show up to take this test. Now, just like any other major test that you've taken in your life, I'm gonna recommend that you guys get a really good night's sleep the night before, and then also make sure that you eat well in the morning so that way you're awake and alert and your brain juices are flowing so you can do a good job on this test. I'm gonna recommend that you show up anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes uh, early, just in case anything crazy happens along the way, and also to let your nerves settle before the test. Now you are gonna to need to make sure that you have your photo ID with you because of course they wanna make sure that it is you that is taking this test and not somebody that's taking it in your place, okay? So you go, you sit down, and you wait for the test to start. Now, the first section of the test is gonna be the math section. Okay, now that's gonna consist of 33 questions and you're gonna have only 46 minutes to answer each of those questions. So if you break that down, you have roughly about one minute and 30 seconds to answer all of those questions. Once you finish that section, you're gonna have a small break in between, and then you're gonna start the second section of the test, which is the reading portion. Now the reading portion is, uh, it goes by really fast. Basically, you're gonna have 36 questions, and you're only gonna have 51 minutes to answer all of those. So again, basically, if you break that down, that gives you about one minute and 30 seconds to answer every single one of those questions. Okay, once that is done, you're gonna sit and they're gonna eventually dismiss everybody and you're gonna go home and you're gonna wait and wait and wait because what happens is the training center themselves isn't gonna be the, the people that actually grade your test. They're gonna actually send it off to a third party company that is going to be scoring and grading these tests for the training center. Okay, so once they've had the time, once they've had the time to review your test, uh, they're gonna let the training center know how you did, and then the training center is gonna notify you um, with a letter in the mail, letting you know whether or not you passed your aptitude test. Now, if you pass the test, congratulations. The next step is gonna be going and taking your interview. And if you didn't pass the aptitude test, that's a bummer, but it's not the end of the world. Basically what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to wait another six months before you can reapply for the apprenticeship and have your second try at taking the aptitude test. So let's talk about the math portion of the test. 
Now, the math portion, like I said, consists of 33 questions, and you're gonna have 46 minutes to answer all those, so basically one minute and 30 seconds per question. Now, they will give you scratch paper when you're taking this, but you unfortunately cannot use a calculator. So it's gonna be really important that going into this test, you know how to do longhand division and multiplication. Now, I just wanna say, if you're applying for this apprenticeship right out of high school, then one, good for you for deciding what you wanna do so early on in your life. Not only is your pension gonna be incredible by the time that you retire, but you're also gonna have a pretty significant advantage um, when you're actually taking this test. And that's because everything that you learned in high school um, in your math classes will hopefully still be at least somewhat fresh in your memory. And that's gonna help you out a lot when you're taking this test. Now, if you're like me, and probably most people, when they go to take this test, it's gonna have been probably years since you have actually been in a math class. And let me just tell you, you do not wanna find out while you're actually taking the test that you need to brush up on your math skills. So it's gonna be really important that you spend the time before you actually go to take your test to brush up on your math skills. So you probably wanna know what kind of questions are actually gonna be on the math portion of the test. Now I do have a list here, but just know that there may be other types of questions that I'm not listing here. Um, and also this list that I'm gonna to read to you guys, I'm gonna put up in the description, but I'm also gonna put a link to a website that has this list on there and a lot of other really good information that you guys are gonna to wanna to check out that's gonna help you to uh, prepare and be successful with this aptitude test. So here's the list. Uh, there's gonna be whole numbers, multiplying and dividing decimals, adding and subtracting fractions, multiplying fractions, rational and irrational numbers, positive and negative numbers, exponents, basic algebra, factoring, proportions, uh, there's gonna be sequences, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you can do some basic graphing. Now the best free resource that I found when I was personally preparing to take my aptitude test is actually a free app called Khan Academy. Now, Khan Academy is awesome. Okay, within this app, you can learn about a bunch of different subjects, but obviously for the sake of this test, you're gonna to wanna to focus on the math section. Okay, now within the math section of Khan Academy, there's gonna be three main subjects that I want you to focus on to prepare for this test. And that's gonna be pre-algebra, basic algebra, and algebra one. Now, within each of these sections, there's gonna be video tutorials that just do a fantastic job of explaining how it is to do the math that you wanna learn. Uh, there's gonna be practice questions and then also practice tests. So I'm gonna recommend that you do every single one of the practice tests just that way you know that you are completely ready for this aptitude test and that you know how to do pretty much everything that the test is gonna cover. So here's what my personal experience was like when I was studying to take the test. Uh, actually about a month or so before I went to take it is when I discovered and downloaded Khan Academy. And what I would do is every single night I would put my daughter to sleep, I would lay her down in her crib, go get my iPad, and then I would literally just lay down on the floor next to her for about one hour every single night just studying and practicing math within that app. And all that repetition and practice helped me out so much to where when I actually went to go take the test, seriously, it was no problem at all. Um, I just flew through that math portion and it honestly felt really easy. So now let's talk about the reading portion of the test. Now, if there's one common thing that I hear from everybody that has taken this test, is that the reading portion goes by really, really fast, or at least it seems that way. So like I said, you're gonna have 36 questions and you're gonna have 51 minutes to answer all of those questions. So yeah, basically just like the math section, one minute and 30 seconds per question. Now, to be honest, the reading portion of the test is kind of a difficult thing to study for, mainly because you're not gonna have any idea what the passages are gonna be about that are on the test. Now, one thing that I would suggest doing just to kind of prepare yourself beforehand is take some online practice reading tests. Now, the link that I posted up in the description that I mentioned earlier that has the list of all the different types of math problems that are on the math portion of the test, it actually does have a sample reading test, and so I would recommend at least checking that out. 
So although this is a difficult thing to study for, um, I will give you some tips that worked out really, really well for me when I took the reading portion of test. Now, one thing that a lot of people suggest to do with reading tests is to kind of skim over the, the questions first before you actually read the passage. That way you kind of have an idea of what you need to be looking for as you're reading through. Now, I actually didn't do that when I took the reading test. <clears throat> what I did is I took a completely different approach that worked out really well for me. So I took my pencil and as I read through the article for the first time, I would underline anything at all that seemed like it had importance. So I would underline things like names, um, definitions, I would underline dates, anything at all that seemed like it could be a potential answer to a question, I would underline. And to my surprise, when I actually eventually went through the questions for the first time, um, pretty much every single answer to those questions was something that I had already underlined. Um, so I would recommend doing that. And if you actually do look at that sample test that I posted up in the description, um, maybe practice doing that and see how that works out for you. Uh, it worked out great for me and I think it'll work out really well for you too. Now, one thing that is really important with the reading and with the math portion of this test is time management. Okay, so like I said, you're gonna have about one minute and 30 seconds per question on this test. So if it takes you longer than that to find the answer, flag in one way or another that question, maybe with a check mark or something, and move on to the next question. Okay, you wanna answer as many questions as you can correctly um, and then maybe once you've finished everything that you can answer, at that point, you're going to want to go back, review the questions that you could not figure out, and you're going to want to try to solve those. I should also mention that this test is multiple choice, and you are not penalized for guessing. So if you absolutely cannot figure out the answer, take a guess, because you're going to have a one in a four chance of still getting the question right. Now there's really not a whole lot to talk about uh, when it comes to the aptitude test, and I think I pretty much covered everything that I wanted to talk about. Now the biggest takeaway that I want you guys to have after watching this video is to make sure that you study before you take this test. Okay, you don't wanna go into this test, like I said, and find out that you need to brush up on your math skills or that you didn't have a plan of how to attack the reading portion of the test. Nobody wants to fail the test on their first, second, or third time. That has happened, uh, not with me, but with other people that I've heard about. And having to wait another six months in between each test just to retake it again. So study beforehand and make sure that you're prepared going into this. All right, you guys. Well, I think that is it. Uh, if you have stuck around until the very end, just know that I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Um, go ahead and just smash that like button if you found this to be helpful. Um, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. I will be releasing a new video hopefully once a week. Um, and if you guys have any questions at all for me about the aptitude test or anything else, drop a comment and I'll make sure to get back to you right away. Um, and then also I wanted to say if you guys have Instagram and you want to keep up with me just on my day-to-day -day life at work, um, my Instagram name is Mad Electrician Official, and I do have a link to my Instagram page up in the description. So anyways, you guys, thank you for taking the time to watch this. I appreciate you so much, and I hope that you guys have a great day.